You know, people ask me all the time, JD, what is your favorite Call of Duty? Usually I say Black Ops 1. And after this past week, it makes me think why I even mention that game as my favorite Call of Duty. Live on stream, if you guys were watching me, let me know down in the comments. If you guys were watching my Black Ops stream last week, okay? I legitimately had such a miserable fucking time on Black Ops because of the connection, the hit detection, second chance, etc., etc., that I took this game out of my system on stream, live, and I replaced it with Black Ops 2. Just by that, and that alone, gives you the idea how bad this fucking game is. If I, if I personally took this game out of my system and replaced it with Black Ops 2, it's fucking bad. This game, I, I don't know how this game has deteriorated into such a piece of shit that it is today. And I don't want to use this word, because it's thrown around way too loosely on Twitter. But this game is cancer in a box. If you never played it before, if you don't own it and you're thinking about buying it, please do not. If you do own it and you want to go back to it, please do not. Save yourself the frustration and anger. This game is fucking garbage. This game is so dead and gone that it should be erased from our memories completely. The days of fucking glory for Black Ops are no more. It was like the hot girlfriend in high school, right? Now it's nothing but a fucking drug addict with no direction in life. That's all Black Ops is to me now. To the point where I'd rather play Black Ops 2. I had more fun on Black Ops 2 than I did on Black Ops. You will never, ever hear me say that again. Why? Because you will never see Black Ops 1 on my Twitch live stream ever again. And if you're not following me on Twitch, link is down below. Please do. I'm on my way to 3,000 followers, but... Enough of me ranting. I know I'm gonna have some fucking clown in the comment section. Oh, the commentary starts at 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Yeah, really? Really? It's my commentary, motherfucker. I could say whatever I want, but... The reason you're here is for Advanced Warfare multiplayer information. And I'm gonna give you my opinion on it because I think this is a... A, uh, talkable topic. Okay? I don't know if that's the right phrase. It's something that we're gonna talk about, okay? Because... This is something that we've asked for, kind of, and Sledgehammer is kind of listening to the community, I would say, alright? But, Advanced Warfare Multiplayer Information, let's get into it. I got a bunch of shit you guys might find interesting, so let's get right into the commentary. All my information comes from Mr. Charlie Intel, by the way. He can be found down in the description below. If you don't know who he is, he is the real number one source for all Call of Duty information on the internet, not T. Martin, not Ali A. Where do you think they get their information from? I'm pretty sure it's Charlie Intel, okay? So he will be linked down in the description below. But Advanced Warfare Multiplayer will feature a traditional playlist without the EXO abilities. So for you guys who are on the fence about buying Advanced Warfare, if you're not into the fucking whole sci-fi jumping, dashing, gliding, sliding, flying, rocket packing, no need to worry. Sledgehammer apparently, and I respect them for this, is listening to the community because I'm sure a lot of people have been vocal about not wanting to play Call of Duty in this manner, okay? They want a traditional Call of Duty game without all this extra bullshit. So Sledgehammer is giving it to you. On day one, you'll be able to play Advanced Warfare without any of the EXO abilities, okay? Uh, like the report says here from Charlie Intel, for players that aren't really interested and don't want the exoskeleton abilities in Call of Duty, Sledgehammer Games is bringing a traditional playlist to Advanced Warfare Multiplayer. This playlist will allow you to play TDM, Domination, Capture the Flag, etc, etc, without the boost jumps, dodge, and all the other new movements, so that players who want to experience the classic Call of Duty can now do so. This playlist will be a separate playlist in multiplayer. So what do I think of this traditional playlist? Number one, I'm going to be positive, okay? But I'm also going to give you the ramifications of, of this decision to put a traditional playlist in there. I'm going to throw it right on the table. I'm going to put it on the microscope. Whatever analogy you want to use, okay? But number one, I'm going to start off positive. 
I appreciate Sledgehammer for listening to the community. I like when developers take the gamer into consideration, right? The core gamer. A lot of people don't want to play this game jumping and boosting and sliding. They don't care for the EXO abilities. A lot of the people who play Call of Duty are casual gamers. They want to play the Call of Duty that they're familiar with, that they love, that they come to know over the last 10 years. So this is the reason why I appreciate the fact that Sledgehammer is listening to the community. Number two, like I said, I'm going to put this one under the microscope, and this is probably the real reason why they are doing it. They are looking at all those people who are still undecided about playing Advanced Warfare, about buying Advanced Warfare, about investing their money into Advanced Warfare. All those people that are undecided. Sledgehammer is thinking, how can we get those question marks over on our side of the fence? You know what? I got it. A traditional playlist. All this is, realistically, is a quick cash grab. All those people that are still iffy and undecided about buying this game, Sledgehammer is going to give you what you want, but in return, you have to give them $60 to play a new, a fresh, a brand new, bold Call of Duty the way you want, okay? You're not going to get the game that is being developed. You're going to get a half-assed Advanced Warfare. Now, you got to take into mind also, these maps were developed with the EXO abilities in mind. What if you do play the uh, traditional playlist? You're not going to get to experience all the maps the way they're meant to be played. You're not going to get to experience that verticality that the developers have so frequently talked about in regards to Advanced Warfare. You're really going to limit yourself in what you are capable of doing within Advanced Warfare with this traditional playlist. Most of the maps, I'm sure, are going to be cut off at least 50%. You gotta keep in mind, like I said, most of these maps are developed with the EXO ability in mind. You're not gonna be able to get to that rooftop. You're not gonna be able to fly to that high vantage point and get a clear scope of the entire map. You're not gonna be able to do any of that stuff. So, if you're okay with that, then great. Everyone can enjoy Advanced Warfare the way they want to play it. So, kudos to Sledgehammer for listening to the community, but it does come with some disadvantages. Now, also, you gotta keep in mind this may split the community 50-50. You may have 50% of the community playing the traditional playlist, but you also might have 50% playing the standard playlist with the EXO ability. So you're kind of going to have a torn community there with both playlists going on at the same time. It also may be a little bit difficult if a lot of people do find the traditional playlist more exciting for them. You may actually find it more difficult to find a lobby in the actual game, which is going to suck for us because I know I'm buying Advanced Warfare to learn the moves and the new jumping and the dashing and the gliding. I'm playing the game the way it's meant to be played. If I want to play traditional Call of Duty, I'll go hop on Modern Warfare 3 and do what I got to do over there. Or I'll hop on Black Ops 2. This is a new game. I may complain a lot. I may bitch a lot. I may say it's not going to be the same Call of Duty that I'm used to, but I'm always up for new challenges. Okay, I'll master this game because I know that I can. I know that I will. I have to. I have to adapt to, to play this game correctly. Otherwise, I won't survive for the entire year. So I'm going to be playing the actual game. I'm not going to be playing the traditional playlist. I may dive into it here and there if the guys want to play it. I may test it out for myself to see what it's about. But ultimately, I would never do that to myself and limit myself with Advanced Warfare. I'm just not going to do that. Also on the list of information regarding Advanced Warfare, and this is a big one, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys heard this one already, but I'm going to cover it anyway. I should have covered it when I did my perk breakdown for Advanced Warfare. If you did miss that video, link is down below in the description. I talk about all the perks that are going to be in the game, and I break them down and let you know what I think is going to be the most critical perks come November 3rd. But no dead silence within Advanced Warfare. It was such a big deal. In Call of Duty Ghosts, I never ran a class without dead silence, okay? Footsteps were way too fucking loud. It made it a lot easier to distinguish enemy footsteps from friendly footsteps, okay? My footsteps were too loud. I never ran without it. I felt naked, all right? And then you mix that with Amplify, and if you have a great headset, you're completely overpowered on the battlefield. That, that's just the way Call of Duty ran, okay? If you did not run dead silence and Amplify, you were pretty much limiting your success within that game. In Advanced Warfare, there's no dead silence. Everyone has a playing field that is completely even, okay? 
So following the multiplayer reveal this past week, many noted that Advanced Warfare multiplayer does not have dead silence within the game. Many players, many pro players, were concerned about this as the footsteps in Advanced Warfare do sound a tad bit loud from what you hear from the gameplay that you've seen on YouTube thus far, okay? This is according to Charlie Intel, okay? Speaking on Reddit, Michael Condry stated that the team is currently working on a different, better solution for dead silence that is currently in the works. We've got a different and what we think is better solution for dead silence in the works. If we are wrong, we'll bring it back. But I don't think this is going to be the case. Now, what that means, it could it could mean anything. They could give you an exo ability to make your footsteps silent for a short period of time. You know, they may think of something else without actually bringing back the perk, okay? I don't want them to bring back dead silence. I don't want to have another perk within the game that I have to strictly rely on to be successful. Now, Optic Nade Shot went a different route here. He actually took to Twitter and vocally said that he needs dead silence within the game because it's going to be critical to, you know, Team Optic and all MLG players when they do their tournaments and compete competitively, okay? This is not right, okay? And I'll tell you why. And I've been saying this for the last couple of commentaries. I said this on a couple of podcasts as well. Nade Shot only cares about Nade Shot. MLG only cares about MLG. Nade Shot has a voice in the Call of Duty community. What does he do? He comes out and says, Dead Silence is needed for MLG competitively. Otherwise, their precious search and destroy matches are going to be a pain in the ass. Okay? I don't care. What if it was in Michael Condry's cards to not include Dead Silence? Everyone complained about Dead Silence in Call of Duty Ghosts. Everyone ran Dead Silence in Call of Duty Ghosts. You were not successful if you ran without it. Plain and simple. So what does Nate Shot do? Instead of talking about the base game and what's going to make the game better, he wants Dead Silence to be included because his precious search and destroy matches are going to be a little bit too difficult with the loud footsteps. Cry me a fucking river. What if the rest of the community doesn't want to deal with Dead Silence anymore? I'm pretty sure most of you listening to me don't want Dead Silence in the game. Don't you want to have everyone even the same on an even playing field? Why do you have to have 80% of the community running Dead Silence and the other 20% not giving a fuck? Why not have everyone even playing the game the same exact way when it comes down to one-on-one? -on -one? Who's the better player? Why do you got to fucking cheapen that? with Dead Silence. I ran Dead Silence on every class in Call of Duty Ghosts, and I got sick and tired because I had to run it. I couldn't experience the other perks because Dead Silence gave me the best chance to win. I want one Call of Duty where I don't have to rely on bullshit to win. I can deal with the flying, I can deal with the fucking boost jumping and the gliding and the sliding. I don't need Dead Silence in the game. Nade Shot only wants Dead Silence in the game because it's gonna make his life a lot easier. It's going to make MLG's life easier. Tough. Deal with it. You play the game how we play it. It shouldn't be, you know, completely opposite, okay? You should not have your own set of rules. You should play the game the same way we play it, without dead silence. You should experience what we go through every day we put that game in our system, plain and simple. And that is really all I have to say about that, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments of this traditional playlist. Do you really think it's going to make a difference? Also, let me know what you think about Dead Silence. Do you want it in the game, or do you prefer to see it removed completely from Advanced Warfare? Remember, if you liked the video, like the fucking video. I'll be back with more Call of Duty Advanced Warfare informational videos because it's going to be quite the interesting year, guys. I'm JD, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Take care.